Hello friends, let us move ahead with um, case six, the lazy mower, and let's start working on question one. Prepare a pro forma statement showing the annual cash flows resulting from the lazy mower project. Okay, so the cash flows um, related to a project are the operating cash flows, the change in working capital, uh, and uh, the change in um, property plant equipment. Okay, And so we're going to have to put together a forecast uh, for all of those things. Now operating cash flow uh, is the um, EBIT plus depreciation minus taxes. So those are some formulas and concepts you need to be aware of uh, before we start sit down and start doing our cash flows. So um, if you look on pages 62 and 63, you can see the depreciation schedule on 63, and you can see a schedule of unit sales and unit price. There's a lot of information contained in the case on pages 61 and 62. Um, about costs. So um, let's start maybe by looking at um, some, some data that um, let's put together the data we need to, uh, to do our cash flow forecasts. So I'm going to sit down here. You may lose me. I'm, here I am. And um, so we have here a it's a 10 year project. Okay, and here's a schedule of the number of units we're going to sell. Uh, let's go ahead and see if we can get a comma in there. We'll put that number. No, I don't like that. Let's make it a. I want to get. Let's see if in there. Nah, heck with it. We'll leave it like that. Um, I wonder what custom. Let's see what custom looks like. Is there a custom number? More. Custom. Let's see if we get the. Yeah. This is what that looks like. Yeah, that's what I wanted. All right, we got, we got comments in there. Cool. All right, so here are the unit sales projected for each year. This is the unit price projected for each year. Let's go ahead and add this, total sales. Hey, what happened to my extra T there? Total sales, okay? And total sales is equal to unit sales times unit price. Boom. Okay, and I've taken the zeros off. I don't. We don't need zero. We don't need the uh, the cents. Dollars is enough. Let's go ahead and scroll down on that, and we've got our sales forecast. Bada bing, bada bum, bada boom. Isn't that great? Now we've got our depreciation schedule in there, and um, I guess we'll get in more detail about that in a little bit. So let's look at some other key information. And let's show them one line item at a time. So, our variable cost per unit is $400. Okay? That's our cost of goods sold. Our fixed cost, which is our SG&A, is $1,500,000. Our plant rent each month, $10,000. Okay? It says that similar plant locations could be leased for $10,000 a month, so that's our cost. Um, our equipment cost up front, $20 million. So let's see where uh, that was, uh, top of page 62. $20 million for equipment. Um, our depreciation, our total depreciation, it says here could be sold for, 20, uh, for $4 million. And this number here is not a number that's important really. Um, the 16 million, when you're using MACRS depreciation, 
you do not include a salvage value. So this number here should be $20 million as well. All right, the tax rate, 34%. Net working capital is 5% um, of sales. Okay. Um, additional inventory, it says that we're going to need, we're going to have to add 400,000, let's see, where is it? 500,000 in inventory, a million dollars in accounts receivable. So these are working capital items that we need. Okay. And it says our accounts payable will increase by um, 600,000. Okay. Uh, at the beginning. All right. So let's put this in the form of uh, a cash flow statement and uh, we'll get into all of this in, in a minute um, again I don't like that let's do that and then take the zeros off there we go okay now so um, we've got net working capital of 900,000 so the initial investment is going to be nine hundred thousand in network capital, which is um, the uh, additional inventory and additional accounts receivable, less the accounts payable. Okay, so that's what these numbers are here. Nine hundred thousand, and I'm not sure why the. I'm not sure what that. So that's a negative number. And that. Okay. And that's going to be. We're going to multiply that by minus one. I, I see why they put it in there. Let's go ahead and just leave it on. Okay. And then, so it's a negative number from a cash flow standpoint. And the initial investment is the $20 million. Okay. Right here. Um, so we have the $20 million. And we've got the 900000 in additional... Uh, working capital. Okay, so our initial cash outflow is twenty million nine hundred thousand dollars. That's how much uh, that we're going to need uh, in order to do this project. Twenty million nine hundred thousand. Okay, and all that's contained at the top of page sixty-two. Okay. So, now let's go about um, creating our uh, operating cash flows. So, our operating cash flows would start with revenues, and um, this person put the units here uh, along with the um, price per unit. To create sales, which is the same thing we could have grabbed it off of this table here. Okay. But um, anyway, so unit sales times um, price per unit equals total sales. Okay. Then our variable cost $400 per uh, unit, and that comes from right here, variable cost. Okay. So 30,000 units times 400 per unit is, um, is 12 million, okay? Our fixed cost a million and a half. Our rent is 10,000 a month times 12 is 120,000. So here is our EBITDA, okay? So uh, revenues minus variable costs 
is equal to cost of goods sold, cost of goods sold minus our fixed cost and our rent, which rent is a fixed cost, um, gives us our EBITDA. Notice that we don't include depreciation in there. Here is our depreciation. In our depreciation, it says is B29, data B29, which is the equipment cost, okay, times D11, and D11, let's see, hold on, let's see where that is, no, scenario D11, oh, um, here's D11, um, Well, it should be, let's go through here, the 20 million times the, the seven year of 14.29. So, bear with me for a second. Yes. So they've made this way too um, complicated here. Um, this number simply is the $20 million in equipment times the seven year um, allowance. And then the first year is 14.29%, and that's $28.58. Now, the reason we need the depreciation is to compute our taxes. So we take our EBITDA minus our depreciation multiplied by the 34% tax rate. And here's the tax rate. Okay? And all that and that's given. And so D10 EBITDA minus D12 depreciation um, is pre-tax income times 34%. Here's our taxes. So we get down to our operating cash flow, which is our um, EBITDA minus our taxes. Okay, EBIT plus depreciation minus taxes is equal to operating cash flow. Then we have to, um, our working capital is going to be 5% of our sales. Yes, 5% of sales. And so, let's see where. So we have 30 million times 0 0.05 is equal to a million 500,000. And this is a key point that you need to keep in mind. All right. When it comes to computing how much we're going to have to put into our working capital, okay? Remember operating cash flow plus or minus the change in net working capital plus or minus the change in property, plant, and equipment. Well, there will be no change in property, plant, and equipment. We spend 20 million and we have enough equipment to get us over the next 10 years but there will be a change in working capital because our working capital needs to be 5% of sales and our sales change so our working capital changes. So we start off with working capital of 900,000. At the end of year one our working capital needs to be 5% of sales and that's 5% of 30 million dollars, which is a million and a half dollars. So the amount of money that we have to invest in working capital is the ending amount, a million and a half, minus the beginning amount of $900,000. We're going to have to put $600,000 into working capital, which is a negative for cash flow. Okay, And actually, the person who started this, um, the $900,000 
the different ways of looking at this. Um, we could push the, we could actually assume that the 5% is the, of sales is the 5% that we're assuming for next year. And if that were the case, then the 900,000 would be fine here and would put 5% of, I'm sorry, the 900,000 is for here and this would be 5% of 34 million here. But let's go ahead and keep it here. So 5% of sales, 5% of 30 million is a million and a half minus our starting capital of 900,000, 600,000, okay? So our, here's our operating cash flow minus the 600,000 and here is our total cash flow, okay? Now, second year, 34,000 uh, units sold at 1,000 per unit, 34 million, 34,000. So we can go ahead, sales equals um, unit sales times uh, unit, call, unit price. So let's go ahead and just scroll that out. And we get 34 million, 38, 8, 36, 1 because our sales price, our units drop and our sales price drop. Units drop and then here our units drop and our sales price drops. So, um, all right. So we can scroll out with our revenues and then we can scroll out with our variable cost, which is the number of units times the cost per unit. And the cost per unit doesn't change um, over the history, but the, um, but the unit sales change. So we get our cost, our fixed costs don't change, um, our rent doesn't change, and our EBITDA is our revenues minus our variable costs minus our fixed costs minus our rent. Okay, so you can scroll these out, okay, drag them out, and um, you can see the EBITDA for each year. So once you set up the first column, it's really easy to scroll out, to, to drag it out, and set up the rest of the columns, okay. Our depreciation here is our $20 million dollars times our 24.49% allowance there, okay? So that's where, so you can scroll that out as well. And that's where our depreciation comes from, okay? And let's see, it's 10 year, uh, and we've got seven years, so after seven years our depreciation goes to well it's a half year in the first year and a half year in uh, half year in the last year so it's eight years so we have two years of no depreciation okay then our taxes we scroll out on that our taxes is our EBITDA minus our depreciation which is our um, pre-tax income okay scroll that out, drag that out, and our operating cash flows, so you can drag that out, okay, and so let's look at our, and then the, our working capital is 5% of sales, so it's 0 .05 times 30 million minus the previous year, that's what this, so this is 0 .05 times sales, so we can scroll, we can drag that out, then this is, um, or this number here, is this number minus this number, okay? So each year, this number minus this number is this number. This is the amount, and so an increase in this number is a negative for cash flow. An increase from here to here is an increase, cash flow, negative for cash flow. Now our sales number must have dropped and sales went from 38.8 to 36.1 so we don't need as much um, working capital because 
our working capital is 5% of sales. So our working capital drops, which generates cash flow for us. So that's a positive number. Drops again, positive number. Stays the same here. So our sales stayed the same for these two years. Sales drop, work capital drops, cash flow generated. Okay? So then our total cash flow, we can scroll it out, is our operating cash flow plus or minus our change in net working capital. Okay? And so we can drag that out and we have it for each year. Now, once we set up our cash, our um, forecasts. So we're going to stop there. Okay, we set up our cash flow forecasts. The top part's an income statement. The bottom part is the changes in um, capital that we need. There's no change in property, plant, and equipment, but there is a change in networking capital. Okay. And so we have generated our cash flows. EBITDA, so we have EBITDA minus depreciation is pre-tax income times 34% is our taxes. So EBITDA minus our taxes is our operating cash flow. And then we have the change in net working capital there is no change in, in the property, plant, and equipment. And we have our total cash flow, operating cash flow, minus the amount we have to put into working capital is equal to our total cash flow. And we will stop it there and come back and, um, and work uh, and do a scenario analysis. All right, that's it for now. Hopefully that helps. I will post this on campus. Peace out. Shalom.